Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. SQL has been at the core of business applications for decades. It fell out of favor for a while in the heyday of big data. It did not take long for people to realize that SQL was still one of the most efficient ways to explore, manipulate, and transform data. With Spark SQL, we can take advantage of the experience of all the SQL experts within the enterprise. We get access to data frames and all of their SQL type methods. In addition, we can create an internal view to that data frame that allows for the use of SQL statements directly. Instead of trying to explain what we can do with Spark SQL, let me go through some examples to give you a feel for it. In the current release of Spark, the driver program accesses Spark using a Spark session object. This supersedes the older concept of Spark context and SQL context. If you've used Spark context and SQL context before, make sure you switch to using the Spark session. Let's say we have a data frame listing the cities in the US. We want to find out which three cities has the most zip code. The data frame has 41,000 rows and includes the columns, place name, state name, state code, postal code, A code, lat, long, and accuracy. The first thing we need to do is to select the columns we need out of the eight available. For this, we use the data frame select method. This returns another data frame with three columns, place name, state name, and postal code. If you remember our discussion on RDDs, we see that this is a transformation, so no execution has occurred yet. Now that we have our initial projection, we want to group our postal codes by cities. The state is also required because a city name is not unique throughout the US. For example, Houston is found in 10 different states. Since we don't need the intermediary result, we can simply chain the next operation to the previous one by calling the group by method on the new data frame. Following the group by, we use the aggregate method on the resulting data frame and give the resulting aggregate column a name. We then order the result in total postal codes descending order. Remember, at this point, we only have transformations, so nothing was executed. We need to add an action to return a result to the client. This is where we use the show method with a parameter of three since we want to get the top three cities. Now the execution occurs and we get a result. I found that a bit surprising to see so many postal codes in a city, but we can see the results on a map from the portal services for Washington DC that shows quite a few postal codes. The same is true for Houston, that has 178 postal codes, and for New York, with 146. Earlier, I mentioned an internal view we could use to do all those operations using SQL. This is done with the create or replace tem view method. Then we can use a Spark session to execute an SQL statement that accesses the cities table and returns the final data frame. Note the show action at the end. It does not have a parameter, so it would display up to 20 rows by default. Since we use the limit command, we know that the data frame has at most three rows, so there is no need to change the default of the show method. If you compare the two approaches, you can see that they are similar, but some people are more comfortable using the SQL language than the data frame methods, so it is good to have both choices. The Spark SQL language includes the ability to add functions for processing. For example, you can define a Python function and add it for use in SQL. The language is also quite complete. Here is an example of a three-file join where the first two files, order header and order details, are joined together using an inner join, and it is then joined with a left outer join with the return item file. What I wanted to do here is to add a return status to the order details as to know if the item was returned or not. This way, I have all the information about the orders and items ordered, and if they are returned, which gives me the data I need to start exploring model creation. Spark SQL is a great tool for data exploration, manipulation, and transformation. You should always keep that in mind when using Spark in your data science projects. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science.